Hey guys, happy Tuesday, happy dream team chat. We are in March and we are working on action steps this month, which I love so much. I'm a huge um, advocate for like information that is tangible that you can take and use and apply to your business right away. And so that's what we're doing this month. All month long, we will be focusing on steps that you can be taking right here, right now in your business to help it grow um, and thrive. And so last week we talked about join conversations. We even did some join combos, which is really cool. Um, and tonight we are talking about booking parties, okay? B booking things on your calendar for your business. This is the best way to ensure that your business is growing, that you're meeting new customers, that you're gaining high PRV, etc. cetera, okay? And so um, we're jumping in. We're, we're diving in and then later at the end, we're going to give you guys some tangible time to book some parties or create some lists of people you want to book parties with. So just keep that in mind as we talk about why it's important and how to do that. Okay. So I am going to remind you guys how important parties are, and hopefully this is not new information to you. Hopefully all of this is just a refresher because Brie and I have been very intentional in the last six months, even year, um, about how important parties are. Okay. With, um, COVID happening a few years ago, four years ago, which is insane, um, with COVID happening and hyper growth and just the way our business shifted, there was this, um, mindset shift in Cincy that parties were not necessary anymore. And I'm here to tell you that that is absolutely not true. Now that we are outside of hyper growth and we are seeing that, oh, we have to go find new customers. We have to work for our PRB. We have to follow up, provide great customer service. We have to do things in our business to help it grow. Um, it circles back to the fact that since he was built on parties, like since he is a party planning business for a reason, and actually it's the best way to fast track your business and grow. So I want to really encourage you guys to step outside of your comfort zone and book parties, book events, book fundraisers, book things on your calendar, um, because they are going to help you grow your business. And yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes. Maybe you've never done it. Yes. It is nerve wracking. Yes. You're an introvert. All of those things can be true while still deciding to do it and to have those parties. Okay. Um, so just a quick recap of what a good party can do for you. It can increase your customer base by three to 15 people. Okay. Imagine doing one party a week and every single week, you're getting three to 15 new customers. Okay. It can increase your PRV from like 200 to a thousand. So imagine every week you're doing a party in your business, um, and you're getting 200 to a thousand new PRV. Okay. That's also on top of all the customers you currently have all the, uh, uh, PRV that you're currently getting from clubs and your current customers and your follow-ups. Okay. So that's 200 to a thousand additional PRV. Um, it's so much easier to sponsor when you're hosting parties because your host is seeing that their friends and family are enjoying Sensi and purchasing. Um, their, your hosts are seeing that it's actually very simple to be sharing these products. Okay. So therefore it's much easier to sponsor your host. It's also much, much easier to sponsor because again, you're increasing your customer base, right? And when you have more customers, you have more people falling in love with Sensi. You have more people seeing the join opportunity. Okay. So it gives you a really awesome opportunity to, um, grow your team, which is incredible. And then also it gives you a huge opportunity to continue to book parties. So really you just need one party that books a party from that party and books a party from that party. And you can look at your business a year later and say, wow, all these customers came from that one party that I was bold enough to have, right? Because those parties grow off of into other parties. Um, and so really just imagining what your business can look like by making parties, um, a regular rhythm in your business. And maybe it's not every week, maybe it's two times a month, right? Um, but regardless of what that looks like, making it a very consistent monthly habit in your business will reap some amazing um, benefits in your business. And so not only will your customer base be much larger, your lifetime PRV will be much larger, your team will also be much larger. And what's really cool talking um, from a leader standpoint is when you start building your team from parties, your new teammates have the 
um, training and guidance and expectation to also do parties. So then they're doing parties and then they're building their team off of parties and then they're building their team off of parties. And you're really building a strong team with a strong foundation at that point. And so just knowing that since he was formed as a party planning business and just knowing all of the benefits to having parties, it really is a no brainer that we should be partying in our business. Okay. Um, I just finished up a Facebook party. Um, technically Sunday was the last day I closed out the rewards yesterday and my customer got, um, $40 worth of free Scentsy two half, uh, two half off. Nope. She got, she got $80 in free Scentsy because we hit the 500 mark. She got $80 in free Scentsy three half off items. Okay. And I, that means I got over 500 PRV from that week long party. Okay. So my post got free and half off Sensi. I got 500 PRV. I got six new customers. Okay. And I booked a party that's starting not this coming Friday, but the next Friday from that one party. Okay. That's just one story. I literally back in 2015, when I joined, I learned, I read in my new consultant guide that parties are what we should be doing. So I hosted my own open house. You guys know about open houses. We talked a lot about this in January and February. Um, but I hosted my own open house from there. I booked a party. Um, and from, and then I also booked an online party. And from there, my business grew for about three years just on parties alone. And I remember looking back at my order forms because back then I kept this whole binder of order forms, fun times, but I remember looking back on all my order forms and I literally didn't know about 90% of the people who I had order forms for, meaning I had met all of the 90% of the people in my business I had met through parties. So it's a really amazing way to get outside of your current network of friends, family, and coworkers, which is you guys, that's the goal. That is the goal is to get outside of your friends, family, and coworkers because they can only order so much Sensi. They might support you month after month for a while, but that is not sustainable. And so it's very important that we get outside of that Parties are a great way to do that, okay? Um, okay, and so I want to share some different ways we can party, and I mentioned them, okay? Um, but we can do in-person parties, which I think are so much fun. If you have a local customer base, um, this is a really great place to start, okay? Start with your best friend, start with your aunt, start with your neighbor, start with your mom, okay? Book an in-person party because they are so much fun. It's amazing to get those testers under people's noses, the products in their hands, seeing stuff up close and personal, meeting you up close and personal because you're amazing. People want to meet you. People need to meet you. Okay. And so doing that in person is a huge benefit. I promise you, you will sell tons of Sensi getting it in front of people. Okay. So in-person parties are incredible. You can do it super casual or you can do it super um, formal. It's up to you and you can go find trainings and resources to establish how you want to step into in-person parties, but I highly recommend them. Okay. Um, then you can do online parties, which is really fun too. Once you figure out how you want to do online parties, it can become really quite simple because it's something that can be duplicated, which I really love about online parties. Um, it used to kind of be daunting to me, but now I've figured out my system and I figure out how I like to do them. And actually it's become a really easy, simple, fun way to make some PRV being on my phone, which I'm already on my phone quite a bit. Okay. So online parties can be great. You can do one day parties. You can do three day parties. You can do one week parties. You can do a zoom party. You could do live. It doesn't matter. Again, figuring out what format you want to do. That's up to you, right? We're all independent consultants. We can all figure out the specific ways that we want to do it. That works for us, but doing it online is a really great option as well. I actually, I want to groove with online parties. Never thought I'd see the day where I'm circling back and loving online parties, but here we are and they've been quite beneficial for me. So I'm really loving online parties. Um, then there is like borrow bags um, or pouch parties or bag parties or catalog parties. There's so many different names to them, um, but that's basically where you get some products together, um, some testers, some catalogs, maybe a mini fan and a pack of pods, a hand cream, a buddy clip, right? And you put it all together. Maybe you could put it in an old whiff box or in a bag that you have or a lunch box or whatever. And you deliver it to one of your local customers or um, someone who works at an office and you tell them, hey, share this with your coworkers, your friends and your family. 
Um, every order you collect helps you earn free and half off Sensi, right? So then they're sharing it with their people and collecting orders. Okay. So that's a really great way, especially now with the new catalog to circle back with your um, local customers to see. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now too, is I'm making a list of who wants my testers. And on a weekly basis, I'm going to be lending those testers out with a bag party and encouraging them to collect some orders. So those are like the three main ways that you can party traditionally, but I also want to put a bug in your ear for events. Events are really great too. Craft shows, uh, pop-ups, um, little fairs and things. Events are a really great way. They're not technically a party, but it's still something on your calendar that can help your business grow. Um, and then also fundraisers. Again, not a party, but something you can put on your catalog that's going to help your business grow, that's going to help you meet new people, um, increase your PRV and just your visibility. Um, so I want to also mention those as well, because those are really great opportunities um, to grow your business as well. But all of these um, types of parties or events or fundraisers or bag parties, online parties, um, they can just be like a simple showcase of products or you can do it themed, right? So I think uh, I think people love a good theme. And so um, really the world is your oyster here with themes because you could ask your host what the vibe is. Um, you guys could come up with one yourselves. You could do a theme as simple as like a brunch and do like brunch foods, or you can do a theme like bingo and play a bingo game, right? You can do a theme like you're um, coloring fragrance flowers, or you can do a theme that you're making live bouquets with flowers, right? The world is your oyster here. You can do whatever type of theme that you want um, or no theme at all. And that's totally fine too. And that really is just the beauty of the freedom and flexibility of this business to be able to ebb and flow and do it in a way that works for you to adjust and change things party to party, even no two parties need to look the same or they can. And so that's where, um, it's really beneficial for you as an independent consultant to figure that out and then to step into that with confidence and also permission to change things up. And so um, just going into that, I just want to encourage you guys as we step into how do we ask and who do we ask to know that the world is your oyster and, and you have the opportunity to really curate this in a way that works for your business. Um, and, and don't, don't let comparison or, um, or being afraid to stop you from doing something really amazing, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna hand it to Brie, but before I do that, I just want to remind you guys that when you are booking parties um, or, or establishing dates or times or things, you want to be a little bit flexible with your host to say like what would work best for you, or how does this sound, but ultimately you are the business owner, okay? So don't um, be afraid to say, I have this and this date available, or I have this and this time available. Okay. Um, I don't like to leave it open and broad saying like, yeah, let me know what works best for you because oftentimes, or like, let me ask around to see who might be interested because oftentimes like that's going to fall flat. So I would encourage you guys as you are trying to book things to try to take control of the situation as a business owner um, and give them options, but firm options. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to pass it to Brie where we talk about some logistics on how we do this. Awesome. Oh, so good. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to jump into that, but actually uh Alex kind of knows this about me. I'm a little bit of like a word geek and like, I love like knowing where sayings come from and like what they actually mean. Um, so this is a total off the track, but I looked up what it means. The world is your oyster. Like you, we say that a lot and it's like, we think we know what it means. And I, I think that Alex probably, this is where she's going, but it's interesting because it derives from a Shakespeare, um, a Shakespeare play or something. Oh, comedy, the Merry Wives of Windsor. None of that is important, but it literally means uh, that everything is open to one. And if one is lucky, they could encounter something special. So to me, I look at that and I go, okay, how does that actually apply to what we're talking about? Because I think that it does perfectly fit in the sense that um, having parties and doing this business in the ways that 
promote a successful, growing, thriving business like we talk about is open to everybody. Everybody has that opportunity. Everybody can go and make it happen, right? Um, and I don't really like the word lucky, but truly when we're talking about parties and booking parties, it's like that opportunity is open to everyone. And if you continue to do that, if you continue to go for the no, if you continue to um, put the work in and put the effort in and build relationships with customers and promote really great parties and things like that, then you will encounter something special in terms of really great high PRV, right? Um, retention of customers, new customers, networking, new hosts, um, new teammates, right? All of these things you'll encounter if you take the chance, right? And do the things in your business, um, like doing parties, um, you'll you'll find that those things will come out of it. And I mean, it's not going to come out of every single one. Let me just like preface that you're going to have party flops. You're going to have people who tell you no. You're going to have effort put in where there is nothing received necessarily, right? Um, but such is life. OK, sometimes we do things and it just doesn't pan out the way that we want it to. But we have to keep going. We have to keep doing. And so just know, like we talk about having joint conversations and going for the no and just expecting that that could be the answer. Um, same with partying, even if our host says yes. And then we go into that party and it doesn't work out like that does not mean that you stop there. That does not mean that you don't ever have a party again. Like that is such a terrible way to move in this business. Um, so please don't do that. Okay. So fun little uh, rabbit trail, but I love words and I love meanings of saying so. Um, okay. So going into who to ask. Okay. So this is a big, like, uh, you know, analysis paralysis can really get you here because you're like, wow, I've got all these people. All right. I actually just am so stuck. I don't know who to ask. Um, and so I'm going to give you kind of a rundown of some good people to start with. OK, and even if you are new, um, this is actually really great for you because then you have like a foot into all of these first time people who are um, getting introduced to Sensi and getting introduced to you as their consultant. Like this is a great opportunity for you to be like, let's get you your, you know, first order from me free and half off. Let me see what I can do. Invite some of your friends over, like open up that network right off the bat. Like Alex talked about in the beginning, her jump into this business started with parties. It started with an open house and her launch party and it just snowballed into there. And that is how Alex um, built such a growing, thriving network of people um, and where a lot of her teammates came from and a lot of her um, customers that are still her customers today. And the same is true for me, to be honest, I, that that is... Um, I had a launch party. I had an in-home launch party. I did an online launch party. Like I did all of those things knowing that this is a party planning business. Um, and if you are doing that, if you're hosting your own events, like Alex talked about, the people who show up are naturally going to be the people that you can go to turn around because they see the fruits of the labor. They see how fun it can be. Um, those are people who it's very easy to be like, yeah, this is great. Can we do it for you? Like you can get your Sensi free and half off. Like I am pocketing all these credits, we can do the same thing with your group of people. Okay. So um, that being said, a group of people who you can absolutely go to if you've been around, if you've done parties before is previous past hosts. And so with the beginning of the spring and summer season, it's a really great time to go back to the host who hosted for you in the fall and winter and say, Hey, brand new season. The people who ordered from you um, back in November are probably needing some new spring and summer scents. Um, we've got all these new beautiful warmers. Are you ready to host again? Like, do you have any open dates? It worked out so great last time. And actually what I love to do too is even people who it flopped, right? Even, even party hosts where we did something and it just didn't work out that great. Nobody ordered or whatever. I always say, let's give it another try in a new season right? Because you just never know. Sometimes people are seasonal Sensi users. Um, and that's kind of why like we see a little bit of a shift during the summer. I'm not, I'm not going to call it like a, like a dip or anything, but like we see a shift in the summer and it's mostly, we can attribute that to people because they're not in their house as much, right? People are off traveling and they're outside their home and they're soaking up the sunshine and stuff like that. And so we see a shift in the people who are using our Sensi or the products that are being used, right? So you might see like mini fans or um, Scentsy Goes or Scent Circles being um, bought more in the summertime versus wax and warmers. And so that shift in um, people's way of using Scentsy can also lead to a shift on 
how they're purchasing or what they're wanting um, during different seasons. So never be afraid to ask a previous past host um, if they're ready to party again, okay? Um, another great group of people is your best customers, right? Um, since he has this really cool thing on our workstation, I don't know if you guys know it, but if you go into your contacts tab and you go to one of your customers and click on their name, it's going to show you their lifetime PRV, okay? Which AKA is how much they've spent with you. So that is a really great reference point um, to be able for you to use, uh, and, and you can even tell them, but um, for me, it would be a reference point where I go back and I look at my, uh, look at those people's PRV and say, oh my gosh, this is such a great customer. Like they've only been buying from me since summer of last year and they've spent over $2,000. Like I need to use that to my benefit by approaching them and saying, hey, you know, you really love your Sensi and I just want to be able to get your next batch of goodies for free and half off. Like, do you have any dates open? Right. So the people who are continuously ordering from you month after month um, are really great people to go to and offer that opportunity. And sometimes uh, a lot of time for me, it, it looks like a shopping link, an open shopping link. And uh, a good handful of those people are just purchasing themselves off that shopping link. But I'm OK with that. They're still getting their Sensi free and half off. Um, and I'm still being deemed their Sensi consultant, which is what I love. Right. The retention of a good customer is um, a good goal to have. But also expanding your network and finding ways to do that is um, key as well. So your best customers are a really great way to do that. Um, also your clubbers, right? Your Sensi clubbers. So obviously these are people who are, love a discount. Okay. So they are in the Sensi club for the perks, for the shipping discount, for the 10% off, for the, um, the half off item at $60. Like those are your people who you need to be reaching out to and saying, Hey, um, I'd love to be able to get to further the discount that you're getting because you're a part of the club. Um, we can, you know, do a party this way, that way, whatever, offer them some kind of um, party alternative that you think that they would love and dive into that, right? Um, those, those people are consistent. Those people have Sensi, they love Sensi, um, and they love a good discount. So definitely offer that to your Sensi club people. Um, and then this feels like a no brainer, but people who are interested in joining, right? So last week we talked about having joined conversations and so many of you had your list or created a list or even reached out to people. And I'd be interested to know how many people were hesitant because of price or timing, or they weren't sure um, who would buy from them. And all of those reasons or excuses can be, um, can be, um, answered, I guess that's not the word I'm looking for, but you can certainly show them what it could be like by offering to do a party with them, right? And it doesn't even have to be a launch party. You don't have to call a launch party or anything. You can just say, okay, well, let's, let's throw a party. And if you want to join at the end of that, because you can get the discounted kit or you can get your kit for free, if we get 500, like all of those options are available. And the same can be true for if people don't know if they're gonna buy from them, a party is a good way to kind of test that out. Um, I never say that that is like foolproof because there is something about somebody saying, hey, I'm having a Sensi party, this is my Sensi person. Um, and people just kind of automatically like, okay, I'm gonna support my friend, maybe possibly, um, but knowing that the benefit is mainly to the consultant, right? Um, then the flip, like I've had people who have hosted parties with me and it's been a flop right? But then as soon as they join, it's like all of their people come out of the woodwork, right? And so there's just a shift that happens for certain people um, where they say, oh yeah, no, I'm going to consult I'm or I'm going to support my consultant, my friend, um, because I know the benefit is 100% hers. Um, and so don't let that don't let that be the waiting factor for your customers if they're nervous about that or if it doesn't pan out, continue to keep that door open. But those are really great people to offer a party to. Um, and then on the flip side of it, offering a party to people who want to be a consultant is also a really great way to show them what it looks like to be a consultant, right? You can kind of show them the how-to of what hosting a party looks like, how a consultant gets free and half off Sensi on the regular, um, and what that looks like kind of in the back office if you wanted to show them. Like there's so many ways that you could kind of open the door and give them a peek behind the curtains on what it looks like for them to be a Sensi consultant. So they can kind of see that played out and they can envision themselves doing it on a regular basis as a consultant, okay? 
Um, and then um, new customers, I kind of touched on that, but that's been my kind of favorite thing is offering it to new people who um, reach out to me, want to be a customer, either on Instagram or in person. Um, I always like to say, let's kick it off by having um, a Sensi party, right? You're new to me. I'd be new to your people. Like it's a great way for us to get to know each other. You can get a feel for how I am as a consultant. Um, and it's just a really great like kind of icebreaker. Um, and so if you have a new customer, don't be afraid to offer a party right off the bat. Um, the worst that can happen is they say no, and then they just continue to be your customer and you build that relationship and then you can come back to it later. Um, and then my favorite way to ask people to party with me is in follow up. OK, and so, so people you're following up with, your customers. And so I am going to say that, but then I'm going to kind of go into the next part of this, which is how to ask. Um, and I'm going to start there. So it literally happened to me just a few minutes before we hopped on the Zoom. Um, I had a customer who I reached out to about getting a box by Brie. She said yes. And then she said, also, I'm going to place an order as soon as my mom figures out what she wants. And I said, hey, do you want me to just open up like a shopping link and um, we can have like a little online showcase for the next few days and you can invite some people and we can try to get what you want and maybe even what your mom wants free and half off. And she's like, yeah, totally down. Right. So it's as easy as that as far as when you're inside your follow ups and you have people who are saying, yes, I want this warmer and I want this and this and this. It is not hard to then turn around and ask that person, hey, would you be willing to um allow me to open up um, a shopping link and um, do a online shopping event for you where you invite some of your friends and then we can get whatever you want free and half off. Um, or if they're in person with you, hey, you know, are you free in the next couple of weeks? Maybe we can sit down and um, have some of your friends come over and I can show Sensi and then maybe you can get all the things that you want for free and half off. Um, there's so many ways that you can word it depending on who it is and where they're at. And if they're local to you, want to take this grab bag and um, take it to your coworkers and try to collect. All we need is seven people who order six bars, right? And then you have a party that allows you to get free and half off stuff. Um, it, it can literally be as simple as that. But those are the easiest conversations to kind of turn around because those people are already buying, right? And it goes back to people wanting the discount, people wanting free people wanting half off right so you are kind of making an offer that makes it hard for them to refuse now you'll still have people refuse you'll still have people say no to you i'll just buy it's fine um and that's okay you don't have to push it um but do track it right write it down so you can come back to it later um but it but it's not it's not a ding on you for you to offer something better for your customers um versus not offering at all Right. And it's kind of like um, bundling and saving. Right. If somebody's or, uh, buying four bars from you, it's not a ding on you to say, hey, if you purchase one more bar, you get one free. Right. You're offering a, a really great deal to them. It's the same with the party. So it's offering dessert. Um, and if they say no, that's OK. It's not personal. Um, but it is your job as a Sensi consultant to give them all the information to give them the best opportunity for them. Um, and so never turn that down. Um, and again, in follow up, I think is the easiest way to do that. Um, another way to do this is an interactive interactive graphics on social media, which I think we've shared a couple so far this season. Um, but consultants put together these really beautiful graphics of like a collage of different warmers. Usually it's like the new warmers of the season. And you can post that on your Facebook or your VIP group or your social media or whatever and ask people which one's their favorite and they're like numbered. And um, when people answer, it's a really great entryway into asking them, hey, do you want that warmer for free and half off or half off? Um, we can open up a personal shopping link, whatever. However you want to step into that conversation, again, you're taking what you know about somebody and you're offering them a way for them to get it that is not that that is actually a value to them, that is um, great news on their behalf. Um, and so those interactive graphics can really give you a great idea on um, who may be interested in doing a party because you already have what they want at your disposal. OK, um, and then kind of paired with our booking incentive. So you can come up with your own um, type of booking incentive where you say, if you book a party with me in March, um, you can get a fragrance flower for free. OK, now booking incentives are personal specials. So those are things that you can only offer 
um, on one-on-one -on -one communication. Okay. So that's via text message, emails. If you send emails, you can put it in your email, private message. Um, your VIP group does not count as one-on-one -on -one communication. Okay. Um, so social media does not count as one-on-one -on -one communication unless you are privately communicating. Nobody else can see it. Okay. Um, and so, but those are really great ways to kind of incentivize your people. And then the way that you'd go about that is using your perpetual party reward. Um, and, and you can offer whatever you want. You can say you can get a fragrance flower for half off and just use your half off or for free and you pay the difference or whatever you want to offer. It can be a bag of samples, you know, like an extra sample pack. Like it does not have to cost you a lot. Um, I have been offering booking incentives for new hosts, um, that come from parties, right? So I, like Alex have been really having good success with Facebook parties lately. Um, and so I have offered booking incentives for anybody who books a party from that party, um, for my host. And so, I do that with my host to try to book parties because I think it sometimes goes better if my host is asking her people to book a party. Um, and she doesn't say, you know, like, I'm going to get something free, but it's saying, you know, hey, my consultant was really great. I hope you had fun. She takes really great care of you. If you want to book a party with you, she's going to, you know, I got free and half off stuff. You'll get free and half off stuff. I'll buy from you. You know, those kinds of things. So those conversations turn out differently sometimes because there's trust there and there's, um, that relationship factor. And so however you want to use your perpetual party reward during the party planning process as you're booking parties or in the midst of parties, like that is yours to choose from. Um, I just want to make you guys aware though, because I didn't know this until like six months ago and I don't know if it's still in here. I haven't looked in the new catalog, but since he did put in our party on the party page, um, I actually don't see it now. They, they had put in here before about the perpetual party reward. So consult, so customers could see it in the thing. And that can get tricky sometimes if you don't choose to offer it. And people are like, wait, I should have another half off. Um, so anyways, um, yes. So how to ask people is really, um, something that you have to do to get comfortable with. And the more places that you put yourself, the more situations you put yourself in, um, the easier it gets, okay? So think about all the areas of your business and ask yourself, how can I maximize the buying, the hosting, the joining in this situation, right? So if you are in the midst of a party or you are out in public or you are talking to a new customer or you're following up, like how can you maximize those three areas of your business? What, what works best in this conversation? How do I move forward with this customer? Am I just interested in, in her buying from me? Can I offer her to host a party? Can I ask her if she's interested in joining? Like those three things should be at the top of your um, mind when you are um, in the midst of your business, when you are working your business, you should always be looking at how to maximize those three areas, okay? So all that information to say, this is a booking blitz for tonight. Um, and so I know that, again, you know, we're doing these actionable things, but also for some of us, it's 9.15 at night. So um, maybe the action can't be taken because it's a little late. Um, so two things. If you are, if it is not late where you are and you have a list of people who you could ask, um, uh, customers, previous hosts, whatever, I want to give you guys the next five minutes to do that. If it is too late where you are and you cannot ask somebody or ask people, then I want you to spend the next five minutes making a list of people you plan to ask tomorrow. Okay, and you take five minutes. So you can come up with the people you're gonna ask in five minutes, make a list of five to seven people and then come up with verbiage or how, uh, what situation are you gonna put yourself in? Are you gonna follow up with them? Are you going to just ask them? Are you gonna do the interactive graphic and then follow up with whoever answers on there? Like, how are you going to present that ask to those five to seven people tomorrow? Okay, so we're gonna give you five minutes to do that. I'm going to hop off here.